four months in of owning the Recon 120. Is it worth it? Would I do it again? How do I have it set up? Stay tuned. Alrighty guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I am Chris, AKA Yak and Life, and this is my Recon 120. Now I've had this now for about four months, so I decided after a couple comments and questions between Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, you know, all the social media sites, uh, that I would, you know, answer a few of the questions and I would take you in and give you the pros and cons of after owning this for four months and what I think and uh, if I would buy it again. And, um, well, the answer is yes. So let's go over this and let's check it out. So the first thing we're going to start off is we'll start off up front and we're going to start with this hatch. Now we have these two basically bungees that hold them down, keep the lid closed. And I'm just going to take you in and I'm going to show you what I got going on in here and what I keep in there. So inside this hatch i actually keep a whole container of soft plastics that i use i am a soft plastic nut i love throwing soft plastics this is actually a sterlite container that i got from walmart for probably four dollars or less and it fits soft plastics in there absolutely perfect so i have a video on that you can check that out what else i keep in here is I actually keep just a random screwdriver. I keep a um, iPhone cord to charge my phone. I keep some carabiner clips that I got from the dollar store. Foam golf balls. I get them from Walmart. I use them in, in the scupper holes if I ever, uh, you know, want to plug them up. Uh, some random zip ties. Of course, a first aid kit. You guys, you don't need an expensive first kit or anything crazy. But I will say, highly recommend it just in case if anything ever happened. I keep some electrical tape in here, actually. Uh, some power, power cord, which I also got from the dollar store. Uh, you'll see what I'm going to be using this for in an upcoming video, but I keep that in there. And I keep some mic microfiber uh, cleaning towels also from the dollar store. Guys, the dollar store's got so many cool things in there that you could use and uh, without spending a lot of money. Now we could take this hatch out and you'll see in here, I have a 12 volt battery in there in which I use for some electronics that I run. So let's bring you towards the back a little further. Now you'll see I, on both sides of the kayak, we have a couple tracks. Now, one of the questions I had in one of my previous videos was asking about the tracks on this kayak and he said he was you know a track accessory nut well these are the only two tracks that come on the kayak but there is a ton of room to add plenty more tracks on here if you really wanted to so i'm pretty content with what i have for right now but in this track i have just a yak attack rod mount that i use when I'm just moving from spot to spot, I just throw my rod in here and uh, that'll hold it in place. Over here, I have a ram ball mount in this track. That actually, I swap between my truck and my kayak is a phone holder that holds my phone and uh, or footrest here. And then we have this spot here in the middle, which is used for the pedal drive system. Every once in a while, I might throw my pliers in there or my uh, fish scale in there just things that i'm using randomly throughout the day now of course we have our seat guys this thing is super comfortable the only complaint i've ever heard some people mention was the bar in the back pressed against your back could be a little sore or bothersome i have had zero issues with that to this point yet under here i have my junk drawer now typically what i keep in here is i just keep some um 
sunscreen. I usually keep some bug spray. I have a Guggen fish scale with uh, grippers, a wacky rig kit. I mean, like I said, this thing's a junk drawer. Z-Man chatterbait, some worm weights. I keep this monster bass um, zippered up pouch that I use for once in a while. I'll just throw my wallet in there, my keys, stuff like that. Uh, I keep some fluorocarbon line in here that I have in there. And yes, I use Vanish. I actually have some Casking fluorocarbon on order right now that I just ordered because I wanted to try that out and I've heard good things about it. I keep some of this Spike It Dip and Glow in here. Then I also got this little tray from the dollar store. And in here I just keep my pliers. I keep a just a cheap Eagle Claw um, measuring tape, some O-rings for wacky rigging, O-ring tool, some super glue, little pair of scissors. But like I said, this thing is a junk drawer. So basically I just put anything and everything in there that I'm using throughout the day. Uh, this drawer, I actually have a video on that as well. You can actually find out all about this under seat uh, tray drawer that I did uh, that's on my channel as well I have a whole video on that how I did it how I figured it out and all that so like I said I just keep that stuff in there it slides under there fits perfect and uh, let's take you on to the next thing now we also have this channel here that runs from the front of the kayak all the way back and you can see I have a rod in there now, I typically bring four rods with me, one of which I keep in here, which is the one I typically want to throw most of the time. And then the other three I keep behind the seat in a DIY crate that I did as well. I'll take you in for a closer look at that crate. But this just comes with a bungee here just to keep your rod in place. That's it right there. Doesn't go anywhere. Oh, also, before I forget, this is where I put in my electronics into the kayak. I have a voltmeter here, I have dual USB ports and a switch. If I flip the switch, obviously you can see it turns on. You can see it's showing 13 volts there. And then the dual USB ports light up, flip the switch, and everything's off. Now I run two things to that. I run my camera or my cable to charge my camera and give me all day power on that. And then I also plug in my cell phone into that to keep that charged up when needed. So here we go, making our way back. My kayak crate. Now, what I keep in here is just a net. I keep in basically just an anchor if I ever need one for some reason. And I just have it attached to some power cord that I believe I also got from the dollar store. Guys, I'm telling you, the dollar store, check it out. Get lots of good stuff for cheap. I keep a uh, just a strap in here. And then I have my hooks and other hard, hard baits in there as well. Now this is four 3,600 size tackle trays. And I have to tell you, I have room probably for another three or four trays in there. Now, along with the uh, crate, I have three rod holders back here in which I keep two more bait casters and a spinning reel. I only bring the spinning reel usually if I'm planning on throwing any kind of drop shots or Ned rigs. Otherwise, I keep something else on my other two bait casters just to keep that ready to go. I don't have to constantly be switching baits. Although this is probably my favorite one I have right now. It is a Cast King Assassin, and I absolutely love that reel. I have, you know, Luz and a couple other brands as well, but that Cast King, man, hands down, I love that. Now this is a DIY um, dolly or a cart that I made for my kayak and um, Extremely easy to make. There's a ton of them on YouTube. If you guys want me to tell you exactly how I made this one, I will do that for you. Works without any problems whatsoever. And um, yeah, it's been, it's made moving this kayak around just a breeze. Over here, you'll see on this other channel here where you could lay a couple rods in here. 
I have a ram ball mount. And to that, I have a PVC pipe that comes all the way up. And you'll see it has a fitting on the end for a GoPro or for any other camera. Basically, I just loosen this up. I bring this straight up like that. It's hard to do with one hand. I'm gonna try. There you go. Show that real quick. So then I have the pole going up. It's about four feet tall, three and a half, four feet. I forget exactly what dimensions I made that, but then at that point I can mount a camera up there for an over the shoulder view. And uh, yeah, that's that. That just, when I loosen this up, I loosen that up and I can just lay it back down. It sits just right into this channel, out of the way. Perfect for what I want. Now, for the person who was asking about the track mounts, like I said, these are the only two tracks that come on this kayak, but you have a lot of space, flat space, along the inside of this area here. You can mount them back here, which I've seen some people do. People take them and they mount them back here and where this padding is, they cut away a little bit of the padding, remove it all. I actually remove some, so you can see just where I mounted that ram mount here um so you have plenty of space back there to do you could put a small track behind the seat you have room to put tracks back here if you want you could put tracks back in here if you need to so plenty of room to customize this thing and do it exactly how you want so now the question right do you really like it would you buy it again are there any pros or cons to it the only con to this kayak is that it is a pretty heavy kayak now it's not too bad for me uh just to you know throw in the back of my truck in the bed and move it around especially with this cart that i made not bad at all um, in the future maybe i'll i don't know build a kayak trailer for it i'm planning on motorizing it so you know there definitely is going to be uh, a little more weight added to this so you know the only downside is really that it can be a little heavy um other than that i mean there's a lot of pros that i feel to it um especially the width of it you know the 39 inches wide and it is super stable it is definitely definitely a step above the lifetime that i used to have um there's just a lot of things you can customize and do to it. I have plenty more things that I'm going to be doing to this. I'm just taking my time and trying to do it exactly how I want to. I'm trying to enjoy this for a few months. And then next year, we're going to really go gung-ho in this kayak uh, to start up the season. I plan on fishing uh, some tournaments. I'm going to be doing hopefully a little uh, of the KBF tournaments, the kayak uh, bass fishing tournaments for my state. And uh, yeah. So, um, I, I really don't have anything bad to say about it other than the weight. It is pretty heavy. Other than that, it maneuvers pretty well. It's very easy to get around in. And uh, I, I really don't have anything bad to say about it other than the weight, which is pretty expected for the size of this kayak and how wide it is. And once you start adding the accessories, I mean, the battery added some weight, of course, and you know, just a little other things here and there that I did. But hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully, uh, you know, you think about purchasing one for yourself because like, as I said, it is a great kayak. There is nothing on this that I've had an issue with or that is cheaply made or anything like that. So um, guys, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit this bell notification, subscribe for me, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Take care.